Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of Fly Tying Friday here on the Ozark Fly Fishing Channel. Today we are going to be tying the ever-famous Clouser Minnow. It's a universal fly for saltwater and freshwater. You can catch just about any fish on it. If you want to know more about this fly, please click the link in the description down below to head over to my website, ozarkflyfishing.com. I will also be posting a list of materials in the description down below, but I highly recommend you go to your local fly shop and support them. For a list of materials, we'll be using the Mustad Blonde Aberdeen size 2 hook, some painted uh, dumbbell eyes, I'm use color red today, some rainbow flash tinsel. white thread. I, this is probably sewing thread, but you know, I'm not too picky about it, unlike some people out there. And then white bucktail fur and some type of colored, colored bucktail fur. Today I'm going to be using this light blue pattern. So you're going to put your hook in the vise, point going down in the back horizontal. You really want to clamp it down because you're going to be putting a lot of tension on your thread wraps. First start by making your jam knot going down the hook. When it comes to the placement of the dumbbell eyes on the hook, it's something that can be pretty critical. If you get it wrong, then it can be difficult when you go tying your bucktail on. I like to put a couple wraps, or extra wraps there to mark where I'm going to put my eye. When it comes to eye placement, you don't want it too close to the eye or too far back. Somewhere along the line, just a little in front of the middle. Now for the next step, we're going to head and tie on the eye. I myself have to use hemostats for these little eyes because I have big fingers. So lay the dumbbell across the top, do a couple fairly loose wraps going one way without causing it to do that. And then a couple more wraps going the other way. Now we got our dumbbell on there. We want to make sure it's nice and centered. Now we want it. Looks pretty good. So now we can start really cinching it down. Do several cross wraps. And then what I like to do is wrap it around like this. Do a couple more like that. And then finally do something we call in the boys. Boy Scouts called frapping. Just lock all those wraps down. Alright. Once again, go back, make sure your weight's how you want it. I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we're going to do, just to make sure it's locked down securely, just put a little bit of liquid nails on either side, just to make sure it's not going anywhere. The next step we're going to cut out our bucktail now. 
And when you do this, you don't want to get too close to the base because the hairs down there are pretty hollow. So we're going to pick somewhere in the middle. You want a decent clump of hair, but there's one thing I've learned, you can go overboard with this. So just be conscious of that. Pull out all the excess. This, in all reality, need about half of what I cut off. All right, that's looking a little better. Lengthwise, this is kind of short. You usually want double the length of the fly for the clouser minnow, but I don't think anyone's going to mind. I don't think the fish are going to mind, at least. So what you're going to do, hold about a quarter inch, roughly, of hair past your fingers trim off that excess you're going to lay it on your fly going at a 45 degree angle and you want the top of your clump of hair to be at the base of the eye and the bottom of it to go a little bit past the hook then you're going to take it and do some couple wraps around it a 90 degree angle from the hair while still holding on to it Make some tighter wraps, start going down the base of the hook, and back up. Then you're going to bring your thread under the dumbbell eyes and tie the hair down right behind the other side of the dumbbells. Then you're going to do loose, some loose wraps, not tight ones, so it doesn't flare out a whole bunch. Going down to secure the hair to the hook. And then near the end, you can do two or three good tight wraps and more loose wraps going back up. Once again, go under the dumbbells and back towards the front. Next we're going to invert our fly to this position. We're going to grab our flash tinsel now. Grab a couple strands, fold them in half. Gonna wrap them around your thread and back up and tie them down to the top of your hook. Put both strands around on either side of the hook. That one's kind of flaring out a little bit. They both are, so what we could do is pull them back, cinch them down just a little bit better to make sure they stay pointing back like that. Next, we're going to grab our colored bucktail in the same procedure. Don't grab something down below, grab something a little further up, roughly in the middle section. Don't want to grab as much as I did last time. For me personally, I like the colored bucktail to be a little bit longer than the white. That's just my opinion. Some people might tell say otherwise, but once again, I don't think the fish mind. Pull out any loose strands. And once again, 
trim it so it's all flush. With a reasonable amount, and then lay it back down on the hook at the correct angle. A couple loose wraps, 90 degrees to the hair, and then cinch it down tight. While still holding on to it, start cinching it down, going towards the eye of the hook. back up to get a nice tapered carrot look and now we are ready to whip finish pull out a little bit of thread And do roughly five whip finishing wraps. Go ahead, do another five just to lock it down, just to be sure. Go ahead, snip your extra line. And we're going to take our whip finishing tool and, like what we did with the flash tinsel, just separate the hair down either half of the hook. And once again, take our liquid nails or Sally Hansen and thoroughly coat all our wraps to give them a good protective finish. Same thing. With the back of the hair going over the dumbbell weight and even a little bit on these wraps going down the hook shank just so that way the fly doesn't fall apart within the first few fish it catches make sure I didn't get a bunch down in the eye of the hook And there you have it. The Clouser Minnow. If you feel like the tinsels are a little long, go ahead and trim them back. And there you have it, folks. One Clouser Minnow. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching that video. I myself am not a professional fly tire, although I do plan on getting a lot better at it. Although it seems uh, that the fish don't mind as near as much as the people watching these videos. I thank you for tuning in on the very first episode of Fly Fishing Friday here on the Ozark Fly Fishing channel. If you'd like to learn more about this fly and its original creator and a brief history of it and the type of fish it's caught, Please click the link on the description down below to hop over to my website, ozarkflyfishing.com. This is an all-around universal fly for saltwater, freshwater, trout, smallmouth, bonefish. You think of the fish and it has probably caught it. So I highly recommend you stock up on a few of them in your tackle box. Tune in next week for our next Fly Time Friday here on the Ozark Fly Fishing channel. And you all have a blessed day.